It's Sunday morning, March 29th, 2020. Um, Little Prairie, Wisconsin. A little gloomy. It's been gloomy for the last few days, and from what I understand, this weather pattern is supposed to hang out at least till Wednesday before we might see a sunny day. Boy, that we, we really need it now. <laughs> because uh, I think this is a, a, about eight days or so of being hunkered in with the uh, pandemic uh, issues. My uh, barometer is still pretty low. It's not going up very much. Um, so anyways, it's a gloomy Sunday day and there sits my 1950 Magnavox Embassy. Now in my last video, you, if any of you watched it, you'll know that I got the uh, radio working. It's the amplifiers all rebuilt. The radios rebuilt. Um, I didn't change every capacitor in the radio. I left a few in that I didn't think were critical. The electrolytics are still original because they seem to work very well. They test out okay, so I didn't change those out. But I changed all the wax capacitors. The uh, changer has been rebuilt and it plays beautifully. So the project of today in this gloomy Sunday morning is to get the television chassis out and on the bench for evaluation and to see if I could get it uh, to power up with minimal work before I go into uh, restoring it. So let's see how I can do it. Now the trick is is how does this come out of the cabinet? I've investigated it and in the back you can't take it out the back because uh, one of the mounting uh, studs of the changer is in the way. So I'd have to take the changer up and out to get this out the back. But I do believe this comes out the front because this comes apart. There's only two screws I think that hold this whole bezel assembly on and this piece of wood has a couple screws underneath so I think if I take the bezel up and out take the screws that that hold this piece of wood in underneath out it will uh, slide out the front this is a weird screw it's not a Phillips it, it's got a special uh, screw head so I don't know about getting that out but let's see how I can get how far I can get and here's the back and as you can see, I don't think this will slide, not this, but there's another uh, aluminum shield here, right there where my finger is, that won't make it past this. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case. Here is the power supply. The only thing that's on that chassis, I believe, is just the rectifier tubes and the transformer. There's no electrolytics. The electrolytics are all on board on the chassis and you can see how filthy it is. It's absolutely filthy. Very, very dusty. So um, in order for me to get this out, and I'm pretty sure it's going to have to come out the front, I've got to take this off so that the antenna assembly goes with it because that's soldered on the back of this. This obviously comes off and unplugs here. Um, so I guess uh, the next step is to see if I can start taking stuff apart and see how far I get. While I'm working on this, the roast in my slow cooker crock pot is starting to smell very good. It won't be done till late this afternoon. And that's uh, supper for today in there. But here's what I got done in the back. I've removed the uh, rectifier and transformer assembly power supply these uh, two screws here are attached to the chassis underneath from the back now I'm going to go to work on the front well I was mistaken this can't come out the front because the chassis is wider than these pieces it has to come out the back and that's how I thought it should come out uh, to begin with, is out the back. So, 
I guess I will put the bezel assembly and everything back together up here. Um, I think this piece of wood comes off with it. Um, but uh, I'm confused as how I'm going to get it beyond the, um, the stud that the changer is mounted on. I, I don't want to lift that changer out of there just to take this out if I don't have to. So I guess I'll put this back together in front here and then start looking more in the back. And so here's where I'm at. You can see I've got this slid out. But this shield hits the turntable, uh, the corner <coughs> changer mounting stud. Now this is just a shield. It's held on by sheet metal screws here, but there's also one down inside. Now there's a possibility I could get that off. I, I don't know how they originally intended for this to come apart, but <clears throat> I don't want to have to lift that changer out of there. I just don't want to do that. So, let me see if I can get this shield off. Because there's not, not no room on the other side to angle this to get it out. It just won't go around that stud. So let me see if I can get that shield off. So I got the shield off. This top screw right in the corner here just didn't want to turn off. I, it, I got it out, obviously. There it is. But uh, now this thing will slide out. It'll, it'll, it should slide straight out. Uh, the CRT is close to the top, so I guess I got to lift the back end of it a little bit just to get the CRT out. But man, I, <laughs> I think uh, when they engineered this, I think there is a few uh, engineering flaws on it that could have been improved. And maybe if they built ones after 1950, they uh, definitely uh, changed that. But this thing should slide out now. Well, folks, I don't know how they intended for this thing to come out of there, but <clears throat> it has to come out through the front because you can't tip it enough to get the CRT out from the, the back. Nothing comes apart up there. You can't really get it out. This is really a mystery. I, I've never run into anything like this, but of course, <laughs> you know, I haven't done much of this, but it's got to come out through the front somehow. I think I was on the right track the first time, but I got to see what I got to do to get it out of there. It can't come out the front. Um, it's too wide to get between these pieces and these pieces, this piece here, this piece here is not designed to be taken out. They're, they're, they're in permanently unless you break it. And even then, I don't think you can get this side past this and and so one of the things they could have intended is for the serviceman to first take the CRT out and then take it out the back but that that seems absurd I that can't be the case this has to come out with the CRT CRT still mounted to the chassis and it doesn't come out the front I I know that for sure it's got to come out the back but how here I am at the back of it again. Now that shield had to come off, otherwise it couldn't get past this. It can slide out the back because the CRT hits up here. However, this is actually all screwed together. I took this cross piece off the back. That's just screwed on. There's no gluing involved. And I'm kind of thinking that there may be no gluing involved up here and this piece is intended to come out here see here's a screw here which means that the top of course of the of the changer has to come off uh, as well uh, otherwise that piece won't come straight out so I thought what I might do instead of taking it apart I might see if I could take a, a keyhole saw and saw this straight up so that this stays intact and then just this piece comes out but it's got to come out the back and I can't believe that you have to take the CRT off first before it can come out the back I mean look at what you'd all have to do to take that CRT out while it's still on the chassis that that can't be the case 
I think it has to come apart a lot more than just uh, uh, that. So let me see what I can find. Okay, so this is what I've determined. They must have actually intended for the CRT to be taken out the front before you could pull the chassis out the back. That's the only thing I could come up with. And if anyone else has a different idea on this, see I could not find at all a service manual for this embassy. I found individual SAMS folders and riders folders for the components, the radio, the amplifier, and also the television, but not this unit as a whole which I'm sure they may have had instructions in there on, on how to get this chassis out. But it will not come out the back because the CRT hits here. It can't go out the front because the chassis is too wide to get past the uh, side structure. So the only thing I can think of is Magnavox intended for the CRT to be first removed through the front and then the chassis slid out the back, but I'm not going to do that. I want to leave that CRT on there. So I'm going to do something that people are going to say is a no-no. I'm going to saw this piece so that it comes out, and this comes away from here, leaving this intact, this intact, but the center of this I'm going to take out. I know that uh, uh, a lot of people will say, oh no, you shouldn't do it that way, but I'm going to do it that way. So folks, let out a gasp now, <laughs> because I am about to saw that piece up. I'm going to try it with my hand saw. If I can, I've got a uh, skill saw that I could take that up. I'm going to take the center piece of wood out. I had to take the uh, uh, Magnavox uh, metal um, serial number tag and stuff off because it goes across where I'm going to saw but yeah let out a gas now because here it goes and so here we are I know there will be gasps over this but the only way I could figure they intended this chassis to come out of here was to first take the CRT off the chassis and pull it through the front and then the chassis slides out the back and that's why I cut this slot in there this, uh, in hopes that I can get the chassis out without having to remove this. I have no doubt that Magnavox intended first for the CRT to be move, removed from the front because that's why the bezel comes off so easily. Just screw, two screws. It's slotted in the top and the bezel just uh, assembly just comes right out very easy. So they intended for the CRT to be taken out to the front and the chassis out the back once the CRT was removed. I didn't like that. So there's my butcher job. I sawed it, took the piece out, and there it is. There's the chassis. It came right out with the CRT on it, straight out the back. Remember, I had to take that shield off to get it past the, um, the changer mount. So what a job. This is one of those jobs where I start regretting that I even started it. But I got half of it done. Uh, I, I should really continue on with the television, so at least I got it out of there. I have the chassis out and I've got the cabinet put back as much together as I can. And again, to recap, I definitely feel that uh, they intended, this comes apart very easy, they intended for the technician to pull the CRT out through the front and then the chassis, if they had to service the chassis, would come out the back. Uh, that's the only way I could figure it. It was, it was designed to come apart. We go around to the back and I have it all together. Uh, here are the saw cuts, one here and one here. Uh, that's held in place very well with a screw underneath and then the screw through this piece of wood that holds it in place. So that's not, it didn't really uh, damage it at all. The chassis slid right out with that piece of wood uh, uh, out, of, out of the top. So that's how I got it out. So again, now that I got this well lit, here's a saw cut and under the label 
the serial number tag is a saw cut. I don't think that my sawing this up made a big drastic change or difference in it. It certainly did make the chassis uh, uh, it easy to pull the chassis straight out of the back and leave the CRT mounted on the chassis. And so here it is on my workbench, our power supply without electrolytic capacitors. Here is the TV chassis removed without having to take the CRT off of it. Uh, as, as you know from my, one of my earliest videos, the CRT on this is quite weak. I have no idea what kind of a picture it's going to produce. Um, and, and I also mentioned that the owner or the person that sold it to me, the, the original family owner of it, tipped it on its top to slide it up the basement steps and of course this coil came loose. But no damage, it was loose. None of the other tubes came out of it. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this a part 9 video at this point. You know, it took me about two and a half hours to get this thing out of the cabinet and, and onto my workbench. About two and a half hours. And as I've been having a difficult time trying to keep my spirits up with what's going on with the pandemic and everything and forcing myself to try to work on this thing. I think I'm going to call this a part nine for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to test all the tubes, clean up the chassis, top of the chassis as much as I can, clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take a look underneath. So that'll be in the part 10 video.